Active Recall is no doubt one of the best ways to learn, and Ank is an awesome tool for that. But most people don't create good flashcards and get discouraged by the results on the short and long term. In this video, we'll go through the process of making the best card for studying, going from a table 1, rewriting it, and having finally a clear and effective card for studying. In the process, we'll learn some effective ways to study by making better questions and summarizing information. So let's dive right into it. In linear algebra, given a vector space V with basis B of vectors in a flash, the dimensionality of V, the dual set of P, is a set of P asterisk of vectors in the dual space V asterisk with the same index flash such that B and B asterisk form a right orthogonal system. Symbolically, how do you evaluate the dual vector in V asterisk on a vector in the original space V? Um, show answer? Oh. Uh, okay, again. Be honest, do you feel like reading this, let alone answering it? A lot of text is always a bad sign for your Anki cards. Anki cards should be atomic, that is, the concept is very clear and precise. The concept of atomic is very important while using Anki, because they will allow you to make questions that will serve as the main blocks of your knowledge. So let's start to reduce the size of our Anki card. The how to know what is essential and how to write it. Try to imagine this as a one-to-one -one correspondence. This to that, how does this relate to that? So always remember, atomic. This may sound like work because you will make more angry cards. You will see that your enjoyment in answering cards will improve as your knowledge base. You can study with mixed practice by creating decks inside decks. This will make your cards harder to answer, but your memory will improve. But we'll talk about decks inside decks later. Finally, to see if your cards are atomic enough, you can use the chronometer test. You should read the question and answer it in less than 7 to 15 seconds. This is a good rule of thumb, but try to be flexible and train your summarizing abilities. So, let's change our card. This card will result in more than one card, so let's try to make some good examples and some bad examples. We should construct questions like What is this? Basic definitions How does this relate to that? One reason only Or some questions that have lists but can be relatively easy to answer by using mnemonics or other memorization devices. For me, and knowing more about the context of this card, I think the most important questions are What is a dual vector space of a vector space V? How does the vector space V relate to the vector space V asterisk in terms of notation? How can the Kronecker delta symbol be used in a dual vector space? Infinite dimensional case, for example. Some bad examples are What is the Kronecker delta symbol? And the reason is Doesn't relate to the main topic or information. How to evaluate a dual vector in V asterisk on a vector in the original space V? And the reason is needs to have more context to respond, not atomic enough. How do you define linearity? And the reason is too vague and broad, not future-proof, the context may only be evident in the present. Now that we define how to write good questions, let's see how to improve our response rate and memorization. So, let's return to the desk. Now, we'll focus on adding context to our cards by adding cues, so we can answer our questions more effectively. To emphasize the importance of cues, let's read a short paragraph of the book Make It Stick. Having effective retrieval cues is an aspect of learning that often goes overlooked. The task is more than committing knowledge to memory. Being able to retrieve it when we need it is just as important. Let's define better what a cue is. Retrieval cues are stimuli that assist in memory retrieval. In other words, retrieval cues help you access memories stored in long-term memory and bring them to your conscious awareness. So, how to add context and cues to your flashcards? By adding information on the text or visually through images. Let's start with text. For example, using different text formats. Bold font should be used for the most important concepts of the card. Italic for the topic context that the question is inserted. And bars to separate the question, the answer and some extra text. Here is an example. You have the bold font that expresses the main topic of the question, conductivity of a semiconductor, and how it relates with the subtopic doping, italic font. You could use underline in the word expression. For example, to make sure you are looking for a mathematical expression. The bar separates the question, the answer and the extra text. 
The extra text can be used to add subtitles to an image or information about an equation. Next, we'll see the image addition to our cards. In this area, you can add any image that will help you answer the question. For example, the first image helps you to remember that the electron donor in Puritis contributes free electrons. With this information, you can conclude that the electron donors create states near the conduction band. You may find that this cue don't help you to answer the question more precisely or quickly. Of course, these cues are always very personal and vary from person to person. That leads me to the last point. Use any kind of cues like images, sound, colors, text that will help you to memorize the content of the card better. But always remember, the goal is to help you answer the question, not give it away. The question should be medium to easy. The cues will only help you so the cards won't be terribly difficult and boring. Other cues can include personal association, even unrelated image, for example, or graphs. Don't use the same image in different cards. Try other images that should give different points of view or try to draw some. For example, imagine that your professor draws some awesome image in a class. You can redraw it using some software and improve your visualization capabilities. Or you could take a picture of something you like or remembers you of something. So let's continue to edit our cards and let's choose the first question of the table. And we will use the following image that shows some really important characteristic about the definition of a dual space vector, the linear property of the dual space vector. So I hope you liked the video and learned a little more about Anki and how to study with Active Recall. This is the first video of a series of five videos about Anki and Active Recall. On the first, we focused on how to make questions and add cues. On the second, we will focus on types of questions and structure of cards, as well as the more hands-on creation of cards. On the third, we'll learn how to use Anki on a more integrated way with other effective learning techniques and tools. And finally, we'll take a look on how to create a more consistent habit for Anki and ways to improve your memory and recall information. Until then, if you are interested in more Anki videos, you can check out this playlist. And I see you there.